Cody, can you hear me now? You couldn't hear me before, is that correct? Let me, in fact, connect another microphone, which is a little bit better. Give me just one second. Okay, I, I see that I'm live right now on the, on YouTube, so okay, everything's great. But I'm sure that you guys are watching too, so... Let me get this. New microphone. It's a little bit better. Okay. And you guys, please let me know. Okay, привет, привет, привет. Okay, uh, did the sound change? Did, it, did the sound change just now? Is it better now? Is it worse now? Uh, please let me know as well. And I have the chat right here. Hello, guys. I'm excited for this uh, for another uh, live stream, of course, because uh, not only do we have great topics to cover today, which is vocabulary, and you guys. You know, eight hours ago, I asked you what what, what you wanted to to learn about, and now that I have put together a list of words, I'm ready to uh, you know to give it to you all. And this time, I'm uh, I'm recording not you know at 6 p.m. Eastern time as usual, but a little bit earlier because I understand that my audience, yes, the majority of them are in America, and 6 p.m. is the best time, but a half of 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 my uh, my audience is in Europe, in Asia, in South America, uh, so it's in, in 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 other areas, in other regions. So I I have to accommodate you guys sometime. So today is the time, and you might see that I'm a little bit uh, my eyes are a little bit red because I woke up just like half an hour ago to make this uh, live stream for you all. So, but I'm you know I'm, I'm fresh. I'm ready to go. Uh, a couple of things before we move on, before we start with the lesson. Number one, and let me show you all. Number one, oh, oh, I have uh, I have a lot of comments. Dang it! Hello from Greece. I'm present. Hi, videos hanging. It's a good work. Okay, great. Good morning. Uh, okay, w w uh, wonderful. Let me guys show you. Okay, now this right here. Is it not? Why is it not? Well, I guess, let me show you in a quick second. Well, pretty much what I'm trying to show you is that we are at 10,000 subscribers now. Okay, it's not sure. Okay, let me just change that back real quick. Okay, it's, uh, it's a little slow for some reason. I guess because I'm streaming. Yep, right here. Where's the right? here boom as you can see right here on the right side it's 10,025 subscribers and I'm very excited about that because you know I've been doing this for quite a while and it's, it's just I'm just happy to see that we're growing as a, you know as, as a community that what I'm doing has an impact has uh, resonated with people you know a lot so I'm very happy about that and uh, also what's what's interesting is that I started this channel in January 25th I think or somewhere over there and in those dates um, 2015 15 or 16 16 so and then it took hmm hold on yeah, 2016, okay, yes. And then it took a year for me to get a thousand, and then it took another year for me to get 10,000. So it's like a, it's a good, uh, good good date that I'm beating myself to increasing the number of subscribers. But more importantly, um, I have I have seen the growth in the community and in, in how people learn languages. Before, my channel was just like to come here to learn about some topic and then leave which is, you know, not okay. And I decided to kind of engage more with, more with people, create some sort of um, connection, some sort of what... I always forget this word when, I, when I'm live. Um, basically, when I'm working with you and you're working with me, not only am I giving you stuff, but you also, also are giving me things to work with. So uh, things like Practice Friday, things like a weekly slow Russian, all of those things have... Uh, have really improved lately and of course I cannot be not happy about that it's just 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a happy man. And many things has happened since then, uh, which is a book. Uh, and now we are almost done with the website. So all those things are just great and they're wonderful. And I would love to see more, of course, in the future. But anyway, um, 10,000 subscribers, amazing. We're growing. It's exciting. But now let's get to the actual lesson. And let me, guys, let me see the chat because my uh, browser is, is very slow right now. Uh, what is it? Wi Fi is wobbly. Really? Can you guys see and hear me well? What's going on? I'm, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to like say things and then I'm not really, you know, there. I'm not really talking. Let's go Oh my gosh. So can you guys see me, hear me well? What's going on? Oh my. Okay, let me. Let me know what's going on because I, I don't want to continue if you, if you guys cannot hear me. Привет, мой друг, привет. Video output low. 2010 smooth streaming to distribute buffering. What the heck? Okay, let me see. Hmm, that's interesting. Let me see what I can do, guys. Okay, I hope I fixed this. I hope everything's good now. Because I'm back live. Okay, it says stream resumed. It says live stream health is good. Seems like everything's good. Hopefully that's the truth. Okay, let's see. What all this thing is doing? Okay. Again, video output is low. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna have to go like that, uh, regardless of of how slow this is gonna be. Uh, you guys, let me know, please, what you are, how you are receiving this. If everything is good, this is just terrible. I mean, it's not really. Doesn't really matter if you can if you guys can can, can see me at, at all because um, the way I look doesn't really matter. What matters is what I say. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wait for a little bit to see uh, if you guys can can hear me and see me well. Because if not, then I don't know what I have to do. I, I have no idea. I have to do something. Okay, I still have no comments saying that I'm. You know, live or how you guys can, can can see me and hear me. So I'm gonna just hold on for a little bit before I start saying something. Okay, I see I see people coming back to the to the to the stream. Um, how how you guys can see me and hear me? Please let me know. Okay, I have I found my own stream on the, on YouTube. So let me see how I can see and hear myself. You wake up early, start up. I said, look at this. Um, well, I initially I wanted I wanted to do it at 6 p.m. Um, Eastern time, which was eight hours ago, but it didn't work because of the connection again, which is, seems to be an issue now too. Um, and yeah, this is now it's 4:45 a.m. here. I woke up to do this right now. Why? You can tell by by the way I look. <laughs> okay, let me see. Well, yeah, I can, I can see on my own screen, on my own phone, that it's kind of wobbly, but let me see if I can hear myself well. Why? You can tell by the way I look. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I mean, if, if you can hear me well, that's fine. That's all that matters. Okay, so we're going to start with this. Uh, b before we start, go on. Oh, why is it so that? Okay, right here. Um, they... Okay, wonderful. Go on Instagram, which is on the screen right now. Uh, this lesson is titled Big Vocabulary, vocabulary Lesson. And all I do on Instagram is do vocabulary, pretty much. Okay? Uh, I have phrases, I have words, individual words, talking about short topics that you guys might want to, you know, uh, 
learn about. So go on Instagram and check it out. I have a lot of stuff there. And also I announce all the live streams there. Everything that's you know coming up, it's new. It's going to be all on there. Okay. So, but now we're going to go into the actual lesson, which is right here. So I have a couple of topics for, uh, for, for this live stream. First being everyday words. Then we have some more everyday words down here. Then we're going to have World Cup. World Cup number two. Grocery store topic. Public transport. And celebration, which is like the biggest days in Russia that we celebrate their names and uh, dates and whatever the cultural uh, things behind them too. So uh, let's start with everyday words. Everyday words is something that we use on a daily basis, of course. And the first one is možna. Možna is, uh, is it allowed to? Uh, is it possible to? But we use it as can I? So možna is can I? Pretty much, um, let's say an example. I'm going to be putting that in the chat as well so you guys can see. Okay, what's your Instagram account? Instagram, I, I need your link in Instagram. Okay, let me just put it Instagram.com slash be fluent in Russian. Boom. Um, well, actually, I, ha I have to put the HTTP, right? Okay. HTTPS. I was still not. Okay, n n nothing. N n uh, never mind. Uh, you, you can find that, just search for Be Fluent in Russian on, uh, on Instagram. Okay, first phrase, можно. For example, I can say, можно воды. Можно воды. Oops. Можно воды. In fact, what I can do is I can, I can put it right here. Можно воды. It's something that we would ask you know, at the table, for example, you're you're eating something and you ask your mom, mom, можно воды? Like, can I have water? Can I have? So можно is going to be, in this case, can I have? And then воды, we put this word right here into, what is it called? Genitive case. So as you can see, we change вода into воды. Okay, so можно воды? Can I have water? Moving on to number two, which is nada. Nada is kind of like uh, needed. Needed, but we use this face right here, which is мне nada. It's um, literally, I would translate it as is needed to me. Like something is needed to me. But, you know, in, a, in common English, is just I need. Uh, nada, sometimes we say нужно. Uh, instead of this word, we say нужно, but that's just, you know, just another word. Nada, мне надо, о мне нужно is the same exact thing. Uh, we use it as to say that I need something. For example, мне надо поспать. Let me put it right here. Мне надо поспать. I need to sleep. Or поспать, which is like to sleep. To sleep is needed to me. It's just too complicated. It's just too too complex. We just say I need to sleep. Next one is let me do this. Daite, sorry, die, or if we are tia, die The difference between them two is that die is give me informal when you're talking to your friend, and daite is more polite, more formal way when you're talking to somebody of respect, like an elder, teacher, your I don't know. Um, Father of your friend, anything of that sort, you say daite. Uh, and this one is give. Give uh, as a command, but we typically use it as give me. The same thing is um, vody, give me water. It's like it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be rude or offensive in a way because you know in English we always say. Uh, give me water, please. Please, 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 please. In Russia, we don't really have a habit of saying please as often. Yes, of course, it's going to be you know beneficial if you say yes, but it's not mandatory. In, in English, sometimes we even will not do something for you if you don't say please to us. In Russian, 
that's not the case. We can just say дай воды, and it's going to be fine because we don't use please as often. Um, so дай воды, give me water. Дай мяч, give me a ball. Uh, мяч, just so you can know, мяч. Um, дай me, дай whatever. Okay, so дай is going to be give me. And I, and I wanted to do these words when it comes to everyday words because we simply, they are, I think, like under taught. Other things that, um, that like object, for example, I can say uh, t-shirt, whatever, nose, I don't know, room. Those things are easily searchable. You can easily find them online. You can just go on Google Translate, translate the word and find the word itself. Things like this are not easily translatable. Because those are, for example, how do you ever know that nada is like, or mnie nada, in, in fact, the, the third line, is I need. Sometimes the translator doesn't have that, you know, common sense, especially when it comes to Russian, because Russian is a very, you know, rare, rare language. Okay, so last phrase for this page is buči dobri. Buči dobri means please be, not please, be, be kind. In, in English, we have be so kind to do whatever. In Russian, it's just be kind to do something. We say, okay, we can say, buči dobri um, stakan. We can say, buči dobri stakan, which is, be so, buči dobri, comma, stakan. Be so kind, a cup. We don't say, give us a cup. It's uh, this, this phrase, buči dobri, it's just a shorter way of saying buči dobri padać. As you can see, I put it in the brackets because sometimes we don't even say it. Buči dobri padać, whatever. Padać means to give. Okay? So, be so kind to give whatever. But, you know, in a common, common Russian, we just shorten things. And as, as you have noticed, sometimes we don't even have the subject or don't even have uh, verbs in a sentence because those are just... Easily understood. So, buči dobri stakan. Be so kind, a cup. Which means, be so kind to give a cup. So, buči dobri means, be so kind to give. When we shorten things, when we make it just easier for us. And then, stakan is just something that you want them to give you. Okay, so that's first page of this everyday words. Moving on to the second page, but, but before I do that, I want to read the comments. Okay? So let me see what you guys have. Okay. Uh, boom. Chat. Um, think of sharing the knowledge in the Russian language. Well, <laughs> it's it, it's it's what I do. Thank you. I almost learned Russian, but it's 1.49 a.m. Yeah, sometimes I had to do this a little bit, uh, you know, later or earlier than, than usual. I cannot hear or see you now. Wow, that's just... I see you, but it's hung up. Or just follow our aspects, and it would be nice if you could make listen on that. I have a lot of words, a lot of lessons on 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 aspect. If if you just uh, search for aspects on my channel, you're gonna find it. Just find out. Okay, 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 good, good, good. When is my connection now? I'm getting get nothing rebooting. Well, sorry, Kate. <sighs> I mean, it's my connection, of course, as well, and uh, I'm sorry about that. But maybe yeah, if others can see you and hear you, then uh, then do something with your with the internet. But let me check how the stream is doing. Yeah, it's it's kind of doing like whatever uh, medium health of of the stream. But guys, please let me know um, if you have any questions about that page. If you have okay, said uh, things to say, friends. Um, okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with this everyday stuff. And then I'm going to add some things, uh, as you can see, uh, like how to say, things to say to friends. Um, while I do that, can you please put in the comments what you want to hear? Maybe it's some phrases in English that you would love to have translated. Uh, anything of that sort that would help. So I can know, like, what you're looking for. But since you guys don't have any questions, don't have any, any comments on this, I'm going to move on to words, everyday words number two. Oops, let me just put it down a little bit. Is good okay that's, that's better uh, okay so we have these six words six phrases let's start with these four the top four 
is I'm busy. Okay, so yes, and it is I am busy. I'm busy uh, to do something. For example, they call you and say, Привет, Fyodor. Можешь говорить? Can you talk? And I can say, нет, я занят. I am busy. I am I'm, I'm currently busy. Next one, попозже is, means a little later. A little later. Because позже means later. Попозже kind of, oops. Pa kind of adds that, you know, a little bit later. So попозже means a little later. Потом means, means after. Потом, we can also say like later, we can mean later, but uh, потом, literally, it's going gonna, gonna to mean after. So after something is done, I can do whatever you want for me, okay? So потом means later or means after. Then it's не сейчас, which means not now. Сейчас is now, не is kind of like opposite of now, which is not now. Okay, so these four... Four, four, four phrases mean like whenever you're busy or whenever you don't have time for something, you just use those four. You can say yes on it, you can say papursha, you can say patom, or you can say nisi chas. Okay, so those are just like uh, phrases for busy people. Fifth one is is kind of similar, but it's gonna be it's gonna have a different you know uh, flavor to it, different different side of it. This one is gonna be stop. So хватит means stop. Or literally, it means enough, but we typically use it to say, say stop doing something. For example, my girlfriend always, uh, you know, when we are playing around and like joking around, I'd be like tickling her or get on her nerves, and she gets tired of me. And she says, "Watch it, like enough, stop, stop doing that. I don't like it anymore." Okay, so that's how we use "watch uh, You can use it to uh, when somebody is screaming at you and you say "watch it." Uh, you know, I'm tired of it, enough, enough of this, and kind of like, move on. Uh, so those were the five ones, and then I want to focus on this one, on Katya or Kat. Katya is a name which means Kate or Catherine, short for Catherine. And we have this interesting, interesting thing about, about Russian names or about Russian, you know, addressing people. We can address them by saying Katya. Katya, let me just use this this uh, sentence. Katya, and let's use one, one of the previous uh, phrases. Dai mnie sol. Give me salt. Okay, so Katya, dai mnie sol. Let me highlight this. Katya, dai mnie sol. Kate, give me salt. The, the thing that we do a lot is we shorten the addressee okay so whenever we are addressing somebody which is in this case is going to be katya sometimes we shorten it and kind of remove the last the last um, vowel for example in this case we can say instead of saying katya daimne sol we can say kat daimne sol so we typically just remove the last the last letter completely or just replace that with uh, with a soft sign, like in this case. For example, uh, my name is let me go down again. Is Fedja in in Russian? We can say Fedj. Uh, another one is Mama. Uh, we can say Mom. But this only works when we are addressing somebody directly. When right now I'm talking to my mom, and I can say, Mom, привет. You know, when I am talking directly to her. Instead of saying, Mama, привет, I can say, Mom, привет. So as you can see, only when we address a person directly, when we're calling their name or whoever they are, directly to them, only then we can remove this last letter. Because we cannot say, for example, my my brother uh, Misha, Misha is, is a football player, right? I cannot say, let me just put it down. I cannot say, my brat Mish is a football player, whatever. This doesn't work because this one, I am not talking directly to him, I am describing him. So I'm not addressing him in this case. So in this case, I have to add a to it, you know, Misha, because I'm not addressing him. I cannot shorten this. Okay, so this was everyday words number two. 
Let me know what you guys think about it uh, in the comments so I can so I can you know see what's going on. I see that um, my connection isn't the best again, but that's all right. We're gonna get through it. Uh, okay, let me see. What things? Okay, what's different between потом and затем? Fedor, what's up? What's up? Привет, thank you so much. Uh, what's the difference between потом and затем? Потом kind of means afterwards. Connection, so connection. I, I can I see you in slow. Okay, if you see me in slow motion, that's fine. Can you hear me well? That's the most important thing. Okay, just if you can hear me well, that's all that matters. I cannot just accommodate this live stream right now for some reason before that was always fine. Uh, even if I did it like at 6 p.m., everything would still be okay. But this time, I don't know what um, what happened. Okay, let me just quickly explain the uh, diff difference between потом and затем. Потом means kind of like later or means... Um, it's kind of like a vague, vague later, which is or week afterwards. We're not really specifying something uh, sometime specifically. We're just saying, okay, потом, like later. I'm, I don't know when, I don't know really what time, just потом, just later. Затем is more of a, uh, more specific. Затем is like after whatever we are doing now. For example, uh, I can say, uh, I am doing this live stream. Затем я буду есть. Or like right now I'm doing I'm doing live stream. Later or after this I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna eat. Okay, so let me just repeat this real quick. Потом is like later. I'm, I'm not sure what time, but затем is more specific. After whatever you're doing now, you're gonna do something else. You're very specific. You're very clear about what you're gonna uh, what you're gonna do. Okay, seeing that he took an exam on Friday, if took is used in imperfective, it applies the past exam using imperfective, but that, that is unknown. Uh, okay, no, uh, it's not that, that it's unknown in, for imperfective, it's more of a, we don't really care about the result. We care about the process more than more than the result, okay? So if, we, if we're using something in, in, in perfective, then we are, then we're talking about, okay, um, the result of, of the exam is, is important, but if you are using using imperfective, then you're focusing on the process more than the results. Okay, I hope that's clear. Repeat the pronunciation. Okay, let me just go back uh, to show you guys. Boom. Let me go up a little bit for everything. Okay. Ja zainet. I'm busy. Ja zainet. Papoja. Попозже, потом, потом, не сейчас, не сейчас. Okay, it sounds something like this. Не сейчас. Oh, what the heck? Не сейчас. Even though it's written like не сейчас, we said не сейчас. Then it's хватит, хватит. Катя. Catch, that's that's so understandable. Pedia, Pet, Mama, Mom, Moy Brat, Misha, Moy Brat, Misha. Those are just easy to pronounce. Okay, let me go back to the chat. All right, what else do you guys have? We hear you fine, don't worry. Thank you so much. Okay, now I'm not gonna worry. Uh, it's okay now, great. Um, yesterday I saw Russian people in my city. What's that for your FYO? Is that for your opinion? I mean, I know FYI. Yesterday I saw Russian people in my city. I want to meet uh, meet him to practice my Russian, but I'm afraid to bother them. How to overcome it? Okay. Uh, I find a friend on Facebook first and practice with them. Yeah, this is uh, this is a good this is a good this is a good one. But how do I overcome it? Um, well, first of all, if you are afraid that you're gonna bother him, first of all, ask him. Hey, is it okay for me to do this with you? I want to practice my Russian. Is it okay if I practice it, practice that with you sometimes? If, if he says no, then, then no. If he says yes, then great, you can go ahead and do it. You cannot just assume that he is going to be excited or he's going to be, or he's going to uh, understand 
uh, he's gonna understand what you're trying to do, okay? First of all, I think you have to tell them, okay, I want to do first, second, and the third, and then just go in with that, okay? So uh, you're afraid to bother them. Well, that's just kind of like uh, you have, you want to do this, but then you don't want to bother them. There is no middle ground. You're either gonna bother them or you're not gonna do it, okay? So I just go ahead and ask them, it's not gonna hurt. If perfective, if perfective is used, there is no need to talk. Did you pass? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yo, yo, Mera. Okay, moving on uh, to topic number two for, for vocabulary, which is World Cup. And I have two pages, don't worry. It's not just one page. Uh, and I have a lot of words right here next to me, so I can add them in. World Cup. As many of you know, there's going to be World Cup in uh, in Russia, which is soccer in America, football anywhere else in the world. So um, people ask me ask me to do a vocabulary lesson for that. First one is Chempionat Mira Po. Chempionat Mira is uh, Chempionat is championship Mira of the world. So the championship of the world Po is on, and then we add. As you can see right here, pro football, hockey, etc. So, championship of the world on football or hockey. Okay, so we, we use this phrase, Chivanat Mira, as to say championship of the world, in other words, World Cup, and then poor whatever the sport is. And as you can see, to, to, to those that are aware of cases, we put this sport in a data case. But if not, just use whatever case that you know, and it's going to be okay because everybody is going to, is going to understand what you're trying to say. Another way to say World Cup is to say Kubok Mira. Kubok literally means cup, like, you know, a, a cup that, that is uh, given to you, right? Cup. So Kubok Mira is, can be also, uh, sorry, Chimpanat Mira can be replaced by Kubok Mira. Okay, and then pour whatever the sport is. Going down just a bit, uh, we're gonna start another another page right here. Let's name it World Cup number two. And what can you possibly see at the World Cup? If you go to Russia, what can you possibly see there? Well, you're gonna see a lot of volunteer. Volunteer, of course, means volunteer. Volunteer. Um, what what can how, what can I add to that volunteer? Well, I guess that's about it. Just like a, just like a typical word. And then, what are you going to be seeing? You're going to be seeing much. Much means a match, but it means like a, um, yeah, match, right? Yeah, there's a word match. Okay, I was just blinking out. I don't know why. So much means match. It's just clear. And then you're gonna buy a ticket, which is купить Billet. Купить billet means to buy a ticket. To buy a ticket to a match. Okay, do you guys even see this ticket? Okay, that's fine. I mean, you don't know what I, what I mean in here. Okay, next one is you're going to buy a ticket to to a certain match. And match is going to have a time. So, время matcha. Время matcha means um, the uh, time... Game time or match time. Match time. Match time. What else can you can you possibly experience there? Well, when you're going to be watching a match, there's going to be two teams, and team is команда. Команда means team. And then in each команда, in each team, you're going to have eleven players. Players is игроки. Players. Or if you want to say one player, it's going to be игрок, игрок, or игроки. They're going to be scoring goals. And goals is just like this. It's goal. Oops. Oops. Goal. You know, in English we have goal as a, also as a, you know, the goalie is protecting the goal, right? And the goal is also when you score something, right? It also has uh, has the same word. In Russian, a goal when it comes to the frame, the uh, the frame of the 
of the goal area is going to be Varota. So the goalkeeper protects protects Varota, which is, I guess, goals. You know, something that goalkeeper protects, pretty much. Uh, what other words did I... Okay, and uh, when you're going to be traveling to, to Russia to go to World Cup, you're going to stay in a hotel, which is Atel. Atel is a hotel. And then you're going to be staying in a, in, a, in a certain room. We call them номер. Номер is like number, and the reason why, why we call them номер is because there's a number on each door, right? So those are like uh, numbers of your room. So we just call a room a number, I guess. So it's going to be номер. Номер. Let me just translate this to uh, hotel. Boom. Okay. Wonderful. And that's it for World, World Cup, I guess. Let me think if I, let me see if I missed anything. Okay, just, just one last thing. Um, when you're going to be scoring something in a goal, is going to be match. Match means a ball. And that's it for the World Cup of vocabulary. We're going to move on to grocery store next. But before I do that, let me see if you guys have any comments. Okay. What's the World Cup? Okay, let me... Uh, boom. Yes, same here. So excited to watch it. Me too, actually. I might be, I might be able to watch one match while in Russia, but I, I don't think I, I'll, I'll be able to. I think I'm going to be in the U.S. working. That's just terrible, right? Who can remember that the, the most words? Can you use Gostinitsa for hotel? Yes, you can use Gostinitsa for, uh, for the hotel. Let me go back. Hotel slash. <laughs> Gastinica. The, re uh, the difference between Atel and Gastinica mostly is that Gastinica is more like a smaller thing or um, hotel with less, what are they called? Less things that are given to you pretty much. At Atel mostly means that there's going to be breakfast, most likely dinner as well in the hotel, while Gastinica is more of a, here's your room, live there. That's about it. There's not a lot of, you know, customer service. So that's I don't think I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Right here. Gastinica. And again, the difference between them two is hotel is more customer service, I guess. More offerings that you get. And Gastinica is more of um, just stay there and live there for another two. Okay. Moving on to grocery store. Since you, got the, since you guys don't have any more questions. Oh, okay. Uh, I have one question right here. Team lost one drew. Okay. Um, Commanda, Commanda, whatever, let's say uh, Russian team. Commanda Rasi Vigrova. Commanda Rasi Vigrova. Also, you can say Commanda Rasi Vigrova. The team, the uh, Russian team won or lost. We can also say uh, Commander Vasi Sigrava Oops, Sigrava Vnichu, which means uh, the Russian team played to the draw. Okay. Um, okay, Vigrava, Vigrava, Africa, Vigrava, Africa. Okay. For example, if you want to say a Russian team won against somebody, Vigrava, Vigrava, who? Vigrava, let's say, Anglio. They they won uh, or they beat England. Pregrava is um, Pregrava Angli Anglia Angli Europa Pregrava Espanya yeah, Angli Pregrava Angli um, and then if you want to say Сыграл ничью, then it's going to be сыграл ничью с Англией. Англией. Something like this. And watch how Англией changed the, the endings, which is the case. As if you're familiar with that, then great. If not, just say Англия, Англия, Англия every time. It's not going to be an issue. Okay. Uh, moving on to grocery store. Okay. I have, I have a, a couple of topics. Grocery store, public transport, or celebration which is like the, the days that we that we celebrate in 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 Russia okay, I'm not even showing you guys okay I have this topic 
celebration, I have public transport, and I have grocery store. And I only have time to cover one of them. Which one would you want me to cover? Which one would you, would you want me to talk about? Please put it in the chat so I can know, so I'm not going to be covering something that you're not interested in. I thought that we're going to have more time that is going to go back, go, go, go by much smoother. Uh, but it didn't, unfortunately. So I'm gonna wait for a couple of seconds to see uh, which one you guys wanna wanna see the most, and then we're gonna we're gonna continue with that with that one. I still have uh, no comments, by the way, so you have time to to put your comments in. Okay, public transport. I have one vote. Okay, let me put the chat on. Public transport. All right now we're going with public transport. If you guys don't say anything else, but okay. Two votes for that. If, if I'm gonna get four votes for, for public transport, then I'll just go with that one. Or if the time is gonna be out. Um, so yeah. Well, I guess I'm gonna go with the public transport then. Since, since, okay, okay, I'm gonna go with that. Let me go back to the thing. Public transport. And this one actually is pretty, Oops, I went too far. It's pretty interesting because, okay, the reason why why it's interesting interesting is because sometimes we even say things. Okay, it's very de developed in, in in Russia. Public transport is very de developed in Russia uh, for a simple reason of that uh, we don't have a lot of cars, and uh, all all of our cities, even though Russia is big, usually one city. Um, in, okay, in an area, for example, in, in Siberia, that's where I live. Let me fix my, so I'll put it right here. Uh, in Siberia, where I live, we have maybe, let's say, seven biggest cities. And what happens is, Russian, the way Russian cities are, we have a huge area, right? But the main city is just like one in the middle of it, right? And it's very small. Well, it's small, relatively small. Compared to Americans, for example, you have small cities all across. And, like, people live everywhere, right? So you have to travel everywhere for you to get uh, so somewhere, okay? So you have to go, let's say, 15 minutes from here to there to go to the movies. It's not like a one central downtown. It's not one, like, altogether thing. Like in Russia, for example. You can go to a city center and just walk around different restaurants and, and, and shops and movies and everything, uh, and you don't need the car there. You can just take a public transport, get there, and just walk around in there, and then take a public transport back to your house. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, Russian cities are formed in a way that you don't really need a lot of cars. You can just easily get from one point to another by a bus, for example, just stay there, walk around there, do whatever you want there, and just come back. While in America, for example, if you want to go to the movies, and then you want to go to a restaurant, you're going to drive right here, then you're going to drive over there, then you're going to drive back to, to, your, to your house. So you need kind of a car because there are so many, there, all the things are located in different places. You can't really go to one place and access everything. While in Russia, you can because uh, many cities are just, okay, every single area, like uh, let's say Siberia, Moscow area, the main city is going to be in the, in, like, in the middle. If you live there, you don't need cars, really. And that's why uh, we our public transport is, is well developed because our things are not as spread out across the entire Russia. Okay, so... Let's start with the types of public transport. First being autobus. Autobus means, of course, bus. Uh, as you can see, well, it's kind of like auto bus, I guess. Uh, autobus. And uh, without bus, auto means like a car or automobile. Or just, we'll say auto, kind of. Let's then use also machina. Machina means a car. Just so you can know. FYI, as somebody said. Then uh, another one uh, close to autobus is somewhere in the middle of autobus and machina is marsh 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 rotka is that marsh I actually never write uh, never typed this before in my life 
And this one is going to be something like a route route bus. Um, um, we even sometimes sometimes people call it marshrutne um, taxi, which is like a route taxi, but it doesn't make any sense. We just call it marshrutka, which means it's like a small mini bus that goes from one place to another. Typically, it has like 15, 15 seats in it. So it's like a very small thing. Autobus has like 70, 80, a long, a long thing, right? Mashrutka is a faster, smaller, typically more expensive way of transportation. And they're coming, for example, a bus can come once in, in 30 minutes. Mashrutka comes once in, let's say, six minutes. So it's way more frequently because there's less people, goes faster, and just, you know, gets you from point A to point B much quicker. Let's, let's move on. And next one is going to be metro, which is, of course, it's a metro or subway. Well, I'm not even type. Subway. Metro. What other names do we have? I don't think we have any other names for metro. Yeah, metro is the, is the only uh, word that we use for, for metro or for subway. Another one is poist, which is, you know, a train. We also have elektrichka. Elektrichka is electrical train, I guess. Um, let's just put electro train. Uh, but what it does is that trains are typically from, let's say, city Novosibirsk in Siberia to, let's say, Moscow. Long trains that go for days and days and days and days and days. Elektrichka is typically takes you from one point in, in the city to another point in the city. Max is going to take you to, to the city center, to maybe like a, uh, another city that is very close, in close proximity. Maybe that's uh, three hours away from, from your city. It's not going to take you for a day to a whole different region, you know? So Eritrechka is more like a train that goes from... Um, like around the city and it's just like a train it's it looks just like a train the only difference is that trains are not electrical they are on coil or whatever they're on and there no gas maybe but electric train of course runs on electricity as you can tell from the name and they're um sometimes they're very useful because they're being the traffic okay traffic is slow cars on the road and Elektrichka goes on the, on the rails, just pass all the traffic, get to work, get back. That's how I uh, used to commute when I worked in my city, because traffic is just the worst, and it's just much faster to go by this electro train to work and then just come back. You, of course, it's less, less comfortable, but, well, you, um, you either get comfort or you get, you know, speed. Uh, another, another uh, you know area of public, of public transport is uh, other words besides just the types of transport. One word being propka. Propka means jam, traffic jam, propka. Uh, you can say ya stayu propka. Propka. I am standing in, in a jam or I am in the jam. Stayu means like standing, but we also say it when we just say that I'm in the, I'm in the traffic jam. Okay? What other words did I have prepared? Okay. Okay, now let's let, let's talk about some other things. Uh, things that we say that we say uh, when we are in the in the in the public transport uh, to other people. One of them being, we we heard it here. What am I doing? We heard it here. Are you? Are you um, are you getting out? For example, the setting might be you're in a in a metro or in a train or in an electric train or in a bus, wherever it is, and you ask and you want to and this is your exit, right? It's your it's your stop, and there's like two people in your way, and you ask them, but who did you? Are you are you are you leaving? Are you are you getting out? Which means like if you're gonna get out, I'm gonna stay behind you because I'm gonna get out after you. 
If you're not gonna get out, let me get in front of you so I can get out much faster and easier when the bus or whatever else stops. Okay, so that's that means um, are you getting out? Getting out. Can you guys see that? Oh, you cannot even see that. Okay, let me just go like this. Boom. Are you getting out? Next phrase is near door the theater, which means uh, I need to I need to get to the theater. Theater means theater. Near to me door means to. So to me to the theater. What we are skipping right here is, oops, not not there, but rather right here. Нужно доехать. Okay, мне нужно доехать. I can, I can even leave that right here. Мне нужно доехать до театра. I need to get to the theater. Of course, uh, Russian, as I said earlier, gets simplified a lot. That's why нужно доехать is easily understandable. Because you come in, in, into the bus and you say, I need to get to whatever the place is. Everybody understands that um, you need to get somewhere. And you only have to say where you need to get to. And you just say, мне до театра. I need to get to the theater. Without even saying, нужно доехать, because it's just too long. Russian people understand what you mean if you just say, мне до театра. Or you can say, мне до, um, мне до магазина, мне до кафе, мне до школы, to the school. Anything of that sort. You can you can say that and everybody's gonna understand you. Okay, so that's it for public transportation, and that's also it for this lesson. Okay, that's it. We're not gonna cover any other uh, you know vocabulary because we don't have enough time. Let me see what you guys have in the in the chat. Okay, public, okay, public uh, grocery store. Sorry that I didn't uh, I didn't. Talk about that. Marshrutka, yes. By the way, I watched a video about Russian skiing, but they were wearing bathing suits, I think. It was like a special day or something. You should access trolleybus. Trolleybus, okay, so you see right here, trolleybus. Is something closer? Trolleybus? Okay, let me go back. Let me go back to this. Trolleybus is going to be close with autobus and elektrichka. Okay, it's going to be something in the middle. So trolleybus, let me put it right, right here underneath. As you can see, bus is like bus right here, which means bus. And uh, trolley is like trolley. So what it's gonna mean is that it's kind of like a bus, but it operates as, as an electric train. Okay, it runs on electricity as well. And um, hold on, am, am I thinking of something else? Yes, okay. Yes, it's just like a bus that runs on electricity. And you're gonna see at the top of it is gonna have like two little things that, that connect to the electro electro thing, electro cord or route, whatever, and it's gonna run on uh, the electricity. But it's gonna be the same thing as a bus because it goes in between the city. It's not gonna get out of the city. It has a, it has a route that goes from point A to point B and coming back uh, in the city. Let me see other other comments. Go chat. Boom. Gypsy taxes. Okay, uh, that the day I watched a video about Russian skiing. Okay, this one actually is near my city, and I'm gonna go there in this winter, which is actually in exactly in one month I'm gonna be there. So what happened was, it was already spring. It was like March, let's say 10th, for example. It was still snow on the mountain, but it was very hot that people could just wear bathing suits and just snowboard. Even though there was snow on the ground, it was hot from the sun. Sun was giving a lot of heat. Of course, you know, at night it was still cold, but during the day it was like, let's say, 70 degrees, 65 degrees. But since there were a lot of snow before, prior to that, it was still, you know, it was still, it was still fine to snowboard or, or to ski. Um, there so that that was actually near my city and that was one of the 
candidates to set a Guinness record, but some other girl with the jumping rope or something like that beat it. But it's just like, come on now, it's like a thousand people on that mountain, and you are giving that to a girl who jump ropes like a thousand. I don't know what the number was, but yeah. Uh, okay, let me get back to the comments. Gypsy taxes. Well, not only gypsy, there's a lot of Russian taxes. It's just a stereotype. May I pass? What do you mean, may I? Oh, yeah, may, yes, may I pass when it comes to leaving? Yes, may I pass? But it's more of you asking them if if they are you know leaving instead of asking you know their if if if, if I can pass you know. So easy on enough with the trolley. Not like that. No, 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 no. It's not a trolley thing. It's um, I don't know why it's called trolley bus. But it's not, it's not, it's not that. You cannot, it's not like a trolley that, that you can get on with the trolley easily. No, it's not, it's not that, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, if you guys don't have any other questions, any other comments, I just want to thank you all for sticking through this, even though it was terrible because of the streaming quality and the streaming speed. I have no idea. This is 4 a.m., 5.30 a.m. now here, and nobody is on Wi-Fi, I'm sure. There must be something just with the Wi-Fi in the school. I don't know. People are coming back. Maybe it still hasn't adjusted back to the, you know, traffic that that it usually gets. Okay, so once again, check out this Instagram. Also, you know what? Check out. Oh, I closed it. Of course, I would. This is where she gets cold. People get. Cold. Yep, they do get cold. Uh, check out the Russian community. Be fluent in Russian. It's not gonna load quickly since you already know okay it's loading slowly but it's loading uh, while it's loading i'm gonna go back to myself because i am announcing all the live streams there i'm uh, we're posting content on the community of, of be fluent in russian uh, i'm posting content on instagram we're talking we're doing whatever let me just show you now it loaded the facebook community let me just show you guys okay right here uh let me just show something. Oh, I click on something. Okay, so here goes Shasta KC. Uh, KC, he uh, okay. Here is uh, he is writing about about that he got the shirt. Whatever, like my note to him uh, that I wrote him. Uh, here's you can see my announcement. Uh, here's some jokes that okay. I click, I click, I clicked on something accidentally. Oh yeah. I don't know why it's so low. Why it's so slow? Here you see Ashish Prasad posting some jokes in Russian that you can, you know, uh, learn from. See, like something just ridiculously funny. Um, then people asking whatever questions. So pretty much what is happening on this Be Fluent in Russian community is that we are collaborate. We are uh, learning through each other. We're asking each other questions and sometimes people don't have any answers. And that's where I come in. And I respond and I, you know, give you guys uh, whatever feedback or, or whatever else. So ch check out those two resources, Instagram and Facebook community, which is in the description, both of them. And also website is coming up soon. I'm pretty excited about it. If you are on Instagram, you've seen the sneak peek of it. If you are not, then you have missed out. So yeah, uh, I'm so excited for that. And that's it for me. I'll see you. I'll see you next time. I'm going to hang out for a little bit more. So I can read your comments. Thank you. I hope the next lesson is not so early in the morning. Well, I usually do them 6 p.m. Eastern time. But last time the connection was even worse than this. So I couldn't do it at all. I couldn't even start it. This time I was able to start even though it's slow. I feel that they have... They have you just know where I answer questions? Um, well, ask me on Facebook. I have a, a page on Facebook. It's just